Three, the path to Brahman. Adhikarna one, only one path to the world of Brahman. Doubt. It was stated that up to the point where the path of the gods starts, the order of departure from the body is similar, but the path itself is variously described in the various Upanishads. One course starts from the association of the nerves and rays. Then he rises up along these very rays. Chandogya Upanishad 8.6.5 Another starts with the flame. They reach the deity identified with the flame. From the flame to the deity of the day. Brihadaranyaka Upanishad 6.2.15 there is another course stated in Reaching the Path of the Gods, He Comes to the World of Fire, Kaushitaki Upanishad 1.3. Yet another is, When a man departs from this world, he reaches the air, Brihadaranyaka 5.10.1. Still another is, Free from all contaminations, they go by the path of the sun to where lives that Purusha, Immortal and undecaying. Mundak Upanishad 1 to 11. Now the doubt arises. Are these paths different from one another, or are they the same one with many features? Opponent. When in such a predicament, the conclusion to be drawn is that these paths are certainly different on account of their occurring in different contexts and forming the appendages of diverse meditations. Moreover, the categorical assertion in Then Along These Very Rays, Chandogya 8.6.5, will be nullified if the flame, etc., of Brihararanyaka 6.2.15 are taken into consideration. Also, the text about quickness, contained in He Reaches the Sun as Quickly as It Takes the Mind to Move from One Object to Another, Chandogya 8.6.5, will be compromised. Therefore, these paths must be different from one another. Vedantan. To this we say, Sutra 1, Archirandina tatpratite archaha adina Along the path starting from flame, that is, light, tatpratite that being well known. Translation, the soul travels along the path starting from flame, that being well known. We assert that all who would reach Brahman have to proceed along the path starting from flame. Why so? That being well known, that path being well known to all men of realization. Thus it is that in the text, and those others as well who meditate with faith upon the Satya Brahman in the forest, reach the deity identified with flame, Brihadaranyaka 6.2.15, occurring in a context dealing with the meditation on the five fires, we hear of the progress along the path starting from flame, even in the case of those who practice other kinds of meditation. Opponent it may well be that in the case of those meditations where no course is mentioned, this course starting from flame will find its scope. But in the cases where other courses are mentioned, why should one resort to this course starting from flame? Vedantin. To this, the reply is that this might have been so if these courses were totally disparate. As a matter of fact, however, this course leading to the world of Brahman is the same, though possessed of diverse features and indicated in certain places through a few of these characteristics only. This is what we maintain. 
since in all the descriptions the particulars can be recognized as so many aspects of the same path, therefore these can be comprised in a single conception by considering them as interrelated in a successive series of attributes and substantives. Just as in the case of a meditation occurring in different contexts, the different aspects have to be collected into a single whole, Similarly, the characteristics of the path also have to be integrated. Although the meditations may differ, the path must be the same, since it is recognized that it is an aspect of the same path that is present in a particular case, and since the goal to be reached is the same for all. Thus it is that in the different contexts the very same result, that is to say, the attainment of the world of Brahman, is shown in the texts. They attain perfection and live in those worlds of Brahman for a great many superfine years. Brihadaranyaka 6.2.15 He lives there in the world that is free from grief and cold for eternal years. Brihadaranyaka 5.10.1 He attains the same victory everywhere and the same pervasiveness that Brahman Hiranyagarbha has. Kaushitaki Brahmana 1.4. Those who attain this world of Brahman through Brahmacharya. Chandogya 8.4.3. As for the contention that the categorical assertion in Along These Very Rays, Chandogya 8.6.5, will be stultified if the path starting from flame be accepted, that creates little difficulty, since that text is meant merely to imply the attainment of the rays. For a single word, very, cannot posit the attainment of the rays and also the rejection of the flame. Hence, it is to be understood that this text merely emphasizes the connection with the rays. And the text about quickness, Chandogya 865, is not compromised even if the path starts from flame. For what is meant to imply is that in comparison with other goals, Brahman is reached more quickly. And this is just as one might say, I shall reach here in a trice. Moreover, the text, they, that is, the creatures averse to scriptural duties, do not proceed along either of these two paths, Chandogya 5, 10, 8, which enumerates a third state, shows that apart from the path of the mains there is only another path, that is to say, that of the gods, which is divided into the stages of flame, etc. Besides, in the Upanishadic texts that speak of the path as starting from flame, the stages in the path are quite a number, whereas they are few in other texts, and it is proper that the fewer should be made to fit in with the greater. It is from such considerations that it has been said, the soul travels along the path starting from flame, for this is well known. Namaste. So here we begin the third pada of the fourth chapter of Brahma Sutra and the Shariraka Bhashya of Shankaracharya. Shariraka refers to the embodied soul, the individual being, conditioned by material nature and embodied in a certain type of form. Or it can refer to the doctrine or the teaching about its nature. So here we are learning about the nature of the soul in its embodiment, and specifically in this whole chapter, chapter 4, when the soul leaves the body, how does it leave the body and where does it go? Now, this is a singularly important topic because, after all, the moment of death is when our destiny is manifested. This is the result of all the activities of the previous life. And this is the reward or punishment, uh, the result of our previous activities and karma generated therefrom. So it is very, very important to know, to understand, 
the consequences of our activities and how they are reflected at the moment of death. And basically to review what was given in the last pada, there are three possibilities. The unenlightened souls who have not reached self-realization go to the moon and there they enjoy and or suffer the results of their pious and impious activities respectively. And then they return to the earthly planet in another kind of embodiment according to their previous work. So that is the most common result. I would say 99% of everybody takes that route. And this is the realm of Yama, death. And we discussed Yama and his uh, notions or his activities and his attitudes in our series on the Katopanishad. So we're not going to go into that here. We are more interested in what happens to the other two types of souls, namely those who have realized the conditioned or qualified Brahman and the unconditioned or absolute Brahman. Now, these two leave the body at death in exactly the same way as the conditioned souls up until the moment the paths diverge. When the paths to the moon and the sun diverge, the realized souls go by the path of the sun. They go to a higher world, not simply the world of the lower demigods, but to the world of the pure gods, the pure creation, as it's called in Lakshmi Tantra. This means that that part of the creation which exists continuously from the beginning to the end of the universe, to the end of time, as it were, and which is never disturbed or destroyed in the pralayas or the devastations between the kalpas or even the mahakalpas. So we can understand that these beings are liberated from further rebirth in the lower forms, in the sharira, in the body. So the shariraka bhasya is giving the teaching or doctrine of how the liberated souls manifest their liberation after death. And these last two padas of the Brahma Sutra, pada three and four of chapter four, are the summation and the conclusions and really the climax of the entire work because they give the phala or the result of all of our spiritual activities up to this point. So now he is talking about what happens after the paths diverge. Where do the liberated souls go and how do they go? So he is collating or collecting all the descriptions in the various Upanishads and showing how they reflect the description of one path only, which is the path to the sun, the higher path. And, of course, the opponents have many doubts. How is it that it says one thing in one Upanishad and something else in another? Well, it's because those passages describe only one aspect of the higher path. Whereas the whole thing is the combination of all these qualities or aspects of the path. And this is really what is meant by the spiritual path. The path that the soul travels after death. So since we want to go to the highest destination, which is the unconditioned Brahman, even if we have to go there via the conditioned Brahman, the world of Brahman, 
where Brahman is manifest in the form of the various gods and goddesses, whichever one we worship. Huh? See, we perceive the spiritual world in terms of our conceptions, in terms of our ideas, or the image or form of God or goddess that we have worshipped in this life and to whom we are devoted. This is the key, this spiritual love. And he mentions, just in passing, the doctrine of the five fires. And we may have to do a video just about that, because it's such an incredibly powerful and deep secret. Huh? The five fires. Now, some people interpret it literally to mean that a brahmana should have five fires burning in his house at all times. See, in the old days, a house meant really a compound, a family dwelling, where several generations of the same Brahminical family lived in a large, usually square house with an open compound or courtyard in the middle. And so the four directions, the, the house was built according to the directions of the compass, northeast, south, west, and it was square. And also the courtyard in the middle is square. And so in the four directions and in the courtyard, there are fires kept. But these are not the fires mentioned in the doctrine of the five fires. These are only symbolic, or for those who take everything literally. <laughs> the real doctrine of the five fires is that one who is reborn is reborn as offerings in five fires. And we have to discuss this in a separate video because it's too much to go into here. But it's a deep mystical secret and it's described in detail in Brihararanyakopanishad in the very last section, in chapter 6. So you can go read that if you want. But well, we're going to devote an entire video to that because it's such a deep and important secret. So this is the opening sutra, the opening verse of the third pada. And he will go on in this pada to describe the path to Brahman in great detail. And so this is what we have to aim for. This is the result, the phala, that one who realizes Brahman will take after leaving the body at death. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.